So I did something that I told myself I would never ever do, and that is I ordered a cheap airbrush off of Amazon. Why did I do that? When people ask me for recommendations, which airbrush should I get or which airbrush do you recommend? It's a difficult thing to recommend because it's very subjective. What's important to me may not be important to the person that I'm talking to at all. My stance has always been both in my YouTube videos and in person to spend a little bit of extra money and buy a known branded airbrush. At the same time, I can see the appeal of these cheaper products because airbrushing is not a cheap hobby to get into. I mean, by the time you buy an airbrush, a compressor, and some paint, you're easily gonna be into it for a few hundred dollars. And those of us that have been doing this for a while know that it doesn't stop there. There are other things that you're going to want to purchase along the way. So what did I get? I wound up buying the Master G233. As you can see on your screen, I've had this airbrush now for a little bit over a year at the time of this video anyway. And for the price point, it actually comes with some nice options. It has three different needles, a 0.2, a 0.3, and a 0.5 millimeter. So at face value, this could be a decent airbrush for a really good price. The only way for me to know that and to form my own opinions and be able to give you feedback is if I put one in my own hands. I've now had this airbrush for a while. I've actually had a lot of time to use it and play with it and develop my opinions when compared to the other airbrushes that I own in my arsenal. And hopefully this feedback will help you make a better informed decision if you happen to be looking at one of these airbrushes. The first thought that I had, the very first thought when I pulled this airbrush out of the box and held it the first time was, man, this thing feels heavy. Now that could have been my imagination. So I decided to put it on a scale and compare it to some of the other airbrushes that I own. And as you can see, this master airbrush does weigh more than any other airbrush that I currently own by at least two to three grams. The other initial observation that I had the first time that I held this brush also has to do with the weight, but this time I want to talk about the weight bias. I really prefer an airbrush that is either perfectly balanced, which they do exist, but you'll see most airbrushes will have the weight biased toward the front of the brush, which gives you a more natural feel when you're airbrushing because we're generally either level with our canvas or slightly pointed down. It's not really natural to airbrush with the back of the brush lower than the front of the brush. Now, if the weight distribution or the weight bias being toward the handle of the brush is a problem for you, there is a solution that you can try. And that is simply removing the rear handle of the airbrush and that changes the weight distribution so now the weight is toward the front of the brush you can try this i personally do not like it because the needle chuck and the end of the needle tend to get caught in the web of my hand but it is something you can try the other downside to doing that with this particular brush is this brush actually has a feature that you normally see on higher end airbrushes and that is the needle stop at the end of the handle if the handle is removed you won't be able to use the needle stop. What the needle stop does is it controls or stops how far back you can pull the trigger. So by screwing the needle stop in, now I can only move the trigger back a very slight amount. This is not a feature that I ever use on any of my airbrushes, but I can see how it could be helpful for someone new to this that doesn't quite have full control of the airbrush. So if you're working on something detail oriented and you're worried about pulling the trigger back too far and releasing too much paint, you can use that needle stop to control exactly how far back you can pull the trigger and that in turn controls exactly how much paint the airbrush will spray. So the big question is how does it actually perform? I have some Createx Illustration Violet already mixed up. This is mixed at about a one to one and a half ish ratio, so I have one part paint and probably somewhere close to one and a half parts of 4011 reducer. My air pressure is set at 20 PSI. I have found that this particular airbrush likes 
to spray the paint a little bit thinner compared to my other airbrushes and I'll talk about why or what I think is a partial reason behind that. So my air pressure is at 20 PSI. Let's see how this thing does. So here you can see I'm just doing some lines up and down, working the double action trigger on the airbrush. This airbrush is very capable of creating some super fine lines and detail to an extent. If you really pay attention to what I'm doing here and look at these lines closely, it almost looks like the paint is skipping, like it's either too thick or I don't have enough air pressure. And I have played with this airbrush a significant amount and I think the problem is actually in the needle of this brush. This brush gets tip dry extremely fast. It's not tip dry to the extent that it really affects the performance and starts spitting like what you might be used to, but I think that's what's causing the skipping for this particular brush. So what I wound up doing is I took my jeweler's rouge and tried to get a picture of the needle, both the needle out of the master airbrush and then I compared it to the needle out of my Iwata Eclipse because I suspected there's not a lot, if any, quality control going on in the manufacturing process at this price point. Once I looked at the photographs, I'm pretty sure that my suspicion was correct. The issues that I've experienced with this brush from the day that I got it pretty much comes down to the quality of the needle. Here's a shot of the 0.3 millimeter master needle. And you can see it's not a great photograph. It's not super clear. I understand that. It's very difficult to get a really good photograph. I'm not a photographer. But if you look at the tip of the needle, the portion that would be in the fluid nozzle and out to the tip, that's the most important part of your airbrush needle and you can see that it's pretty rough. In comparison, here's a shot of my 0.35 millimeter needle out of my Iwata Eclipse and there's a significant difference. So this is absolutely one of those cases where you get what you pay for. But I did mention that you can get some really nice detail out of this airbrush. I'll demonstrate that on this other piece of paper. Now again, this is a $39 airbrush. I'm actually impressed with how well it does work. It does have some shortcomings. It is made a lot cheaper. The materials that all of the parts are made out of are not quite as good as what I'm used to, but the brush does work surprisingly well. In fact, it's capable, like I said, of some very small details. So I'm not gonna do anything crazy here because I don't wanna take up an enormous amount of time, but I've talked about this in a previous video where I was saying, do you really need a detail-oriented airbrush to get really fine detail? You'll see, you can get some pretty fine lines with this particular airbrush. This is a $39 airbrush. It's got this factory needle in it. I haven't done anything to improve the performance of this airbrush. It is as I got it out of the box with the 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle set. And here I'm just working on a quick little skull. Where this airbrush does fall short is where I would expect it to fall short. It is not as smooth and precise as the other airbrushes that I am used to working with. You'll see my lines are not as smooth and crisp and clean as I would like them to be, which is difficult enough when you're working on something very small like this, but it is a little bit easier when you have that precision and that smooth trigger pull that this airbrush just lacks. The paint doesn't always start exactly when I think it's going to, which is another downside that comes down to that precision factor it's going it's not far off it's also very difficult to do this with a camera literally right next to my face so my lines aren't super clean and crisp and this is not meant to be a finished artwork it's something quick and small just to give you an example of what this airbrush can actually do because 
it is capable of some pretty fine detail. It's not suited for doing really fine detail all the time, in my own opinion, but it is capable of doing so. Now to clean up some of those ugly lines I had on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and just put some of this violet all the way around my little skull, and then we will probably call this one good. In the end, the performance of this airbrush actually exceeded my expectations. I didn't really anticipate this brush working as well as it actually does. It does have its faults. It's not the greatest airbrush out there by any means, but for what it is and the price point that you can purchase one at, I'm actually pretty impressed, which I guess is a testament to the more than 6,000 reviews that are on Amazon. Here's a quick little shot of the airbrush cap for this airbrush next to the little skull just to give you kind of a reference for the actual size. So in conclusion, as I said before, I'm actually pretty impressed with how this brush actually works based on its price point. I also mentioned earlier that I hadn't changed anything on the brush and that's not entirely true. I did make one adjustment. That adjustment has to do with the tension on the trigger. When the brush was new, it comes with the spring guide turned, if not all the way in, it was pretty close to all the way in. And that makes for a much firmer tension on your trigger when you're pulling it back. I personally do not like that much tension on my trigger, so I wind up turning the spring guide out as far as you can without unthreading it from the airbrush body. The downside to that is if you want to use the handle with it turned out all the way, the handle will no longer go into the brush. So you have to turn it in a little bit farther in order to put the handle back on. And there you can see there's still a little bit of a gap because it's not quite far enough for the handle to sit flush. And a little bit farther because the end of the threads on the handle are actually making contact with the spring guide when it's backed off that far. But that gives me a lot less tension on the trigger. The only other thing that I've changed is I put a quick connect on the airbrush for my air hose. Everything else is as it came out of the box, including that needle. And like I said, I've had issues with the paint not spraying super smooth the entire time that I've used this brush. And when I finally looked at the needle under the Jewelers Rouge, it makes sense now why that is. How can you fix that? You could go in and sand that and polish the needle. Me personally, I'm not gonna do that because it's just not worth my time. And the airbrush needles are also tapered. If you start sanding on that, you're going to change that taper to some degree, no matter how careful you are. That could be better, it could be worse, I just don't know. With all my other airbrushes, I've never had to 
sand and polish any of my airbrush needles. They are really good right out of the factory. Could you find another 0.3 millimeter needle to use in this airbrush, another brand? You probably could. Again, the tapers are normally proprietary to each brand, so the taper may not necessarily match the fluid tip on this airbrush. And I doubt that the fluid tip from another airbrush is going to attach to the threads on this airbrush. It is possible if that's something that you wanted to play with. At the end of the day, yes, this airbrush is better than I thought it was going to be. I was pleasantly surprised and a little bit impressed with its performance. I would still stand by what I've always said previously because the difference between this brush and a good no name brand airbrush is night and day. If you start out with one of these and then you later switch to another brand airbrush, I think you will probably be wondering why you didn't do it a lot sooner. It is that much of a difference. If you're somebody who is on a super tight budget and this is literally all you can afford, it's not a bad brush and it will get you by for a while. So I will leave a link to this in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. If you are interested in purchasing one of these and you use that link, you're helping to support the channel and I greatly appreciate that. I hope all of this made sense. If you got something out of this, remember to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Trevor with Wicked Art Studio. I will see you all next time.